Hey, good morning guys, AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. If you remember about a week ago, I did a review of the Bionic Quick Shot Snap-on Trigger Locks for the PS4 DualShock 4 controller. Put it on our budget build here, which is basically all bolt-on parts, so no uh, disassembly of the shell and buttons and going down to the chipset or anything like that. Just basically things you can stick onto it to make it perform a little bit better. And uh, these Quick Shots did not do the trick. They were kind of chintzy and just overall didn't really perform. Uh, but these are the Honcam FPS Trigger Stops and Grip Cover. They look pretty good from afar, but you know, honestly, until we delve into it and bolt it onto our project, we're not gonna we're not gonna know the performance. So let's just jump right into it and see if these are a better option for bolt-on trigger stops. Alrighty, my stallions and stallionettes, we're over here at the Stormtrooper desktop. Is always going to go ahead and slide myself in here. So actually, we're not going to be installing these on our current budget build controller. Um, if you guys haven't watched those videos yet, I'll have a link in the description below to my controller build playlist where I do controllers like this and this on screen here. But uh, this bad boy so far just has the... We started with a $35 Chinese knockoff controller for uh, a company called YCC, I believe, and this thing functions identically to a licensed Sony controller for about uh, two-thirds of the price, which is really great, and then we bolted on some Control Freak thumbsticks here, which feel phenomenal. Uh, this is our second set of grips that we put on. We started with some Control Freaks XT, and these are the Dragon grips here. They're actually much more grippy, uh, and then we put a little light bar sticker on the top there, lets the light bleed through. Looks really cool. So. Uh, all we're pretty much going to do to this to take it to the next level is put on some bolt-on trigger stops and maybe a, uh, a vinyl or decal over the touch bar, and then this thing is complete. Um, so that, it's a very simple build. That's what the, the playlist is all about. But we're actually going to be installing these on a project controller for a client, which is actually my uh, brother-in-law. He gave me this Death Stranding controller as a, as a platform to build a custom Death Stranding theme controller on. So we're going to go ahead and bolt these bad boys on. I have more parts coming for this on Monday. We have uh, face buttons, aluminum analog sticks, D-pad, uh, I believe some aluminum triggers. Uh, and then I'm also looking around on companies like Etsy and little third-party uh, crafting companies to try and get a little uh, fetus or little baby in there so I can remove the DualShock motor, or the uh, Rumble Force motors and basically have the uh, floating baby in a tube from Death Stranding. So I think that will look really cool. I'm also going to hand paint this uh, Death Stranding logo on there to give it a little bit of a little color pop and uh, change the face buttons. This is going to be a somewhat involved process, but nothing compared to some of the uh, more in-depth projects I've done in the past. So as for these, these are just direct bolt-ons and they add a nice little layer of, of uh, grips to them to give them a little bit thicker Profile, so if you have some big old meaty man paws, alrighty. Set our controller to the side here. So in the box you have these two grips here. These feel absolutely phenomenal. They're very thick, and they also have cutouts for your fingers. So I feel like this is going to add a good level of comfort and grip to the controller for something that's just a direct bolt-on. So that's really nice. You also have your trigger lock mechanism in here. They have this knob that you unscrew like that and you can maneuver it up and down and that is gonna allow you to set your amount of trigger stop or trigger lock that you have in there, which is really cool. Um, I, I think this design is really good. I hope it works out as good as it looks because this seems like a really good patent, a really good design. And then you also have these uh, slightly extended triggers here. Um, feel pretty good in the hand. They're not rubberized or anything. This one seemed to have popped off, so we'll just snip that bad boy back on. Well, this one might have came broken, actually. That's unfortunate. So this one actually came broken. Uh, there's a little tab there, as you can see, but there's also supposed to be another little um, hinge or tab on there that snaps into this mount, uh, and that is broken. Came to be broken, so... I don't know, maybe we can make it work, but I'll probably, I don't like to give a customer a controller that already has something kind of fucked up on it, even if it does work, just knowing that that piece was designed to be there and it's not, kind of bothers me. So we'll probably end up returning that and uh, getting a new one, but fuck, that delays the build process and that pisses me off. 
So these trigger stops will actually function with the stock triggers, however, it just seems kind of awkward. They're definitely meant to have those extenders on them, and without that, it just feels kind of nubby, but the actual trigger stops themselves work really good. The mechanism feels extremely durable, as it is metal and hardened plastic, and it does cut out a substantial amount of the trigger pull. That's one of my biggest pet peeves, is with these trigger lock systems, they only cut out about 20 to 30% of the trigger, and that's not what you want. You want about 70 to 80% cut out, to where you get just the finest little minuscule trigger pull and you're definitely getting it with these. I also think the grips are extremely comfortable and they make the controller thicker so for most adults that have average size hands that'll definitely make this thing easier to get a good grip on. So with the extended trigger on this side it does feel a little bit better however honestly without it it is quite playable and it's really not like a deal breaker so I'm going to ask my brother-in-law if this is going to cut it for him. Now, another thing that I'm realizing now is we're actually going to be installing the remappable Dawn kit by Extreme Rate, which is the four paddle or four button in the back uh, of the shell here. And those sit right about here. So I am going to have to do a little bit of fabricating or cutting with my Dremel to cut into here a little bit so the buttons can actually stick through. But that shouldn't be a huge deal. And uh, that'll be a good... Uh, R&D or test process for me to see if I can install both this item with the remappable Dawn kit because those are uh, You know that is a component that I use quite frequently on customer builds So this is the back shell we're using for the extreme rate remappable Dawn kit as you see the buttons are kind of where this this uh, Shroud or cover lies so I'm gonna need to cut into it a little bit. Um, it's not a huge deal I think it's not gonna really add to the uh, build complication at all or anything like that. We are gonna be painting this uh, flat uh, kind of a matte black as well as I'm probably going to tape off some of this awesome, you know, color changing chameleon uh, paint job on there so it bleeds through and then, uh, you know, add a little death stranding flare on there, maybe a little trinket, plastic weld on like a little trinket from the game or something like that. It's going to be a nice build. I'm excited for it.